Hello, today I'm going to talk about advanced ways to use KDSRC minus build. So KDSRC minus build is a way of building the KD Git repositories. There's more than 400 of them. Um, the most important ones are the KD frameworks version 5. So there's you know, 80 of them. And uh, using KDSRC minus build, you can Git clone the correct Git repositories in the correct order. KDSRC minus build knows the dependency between uh, those Git repositories. So if you want to build, for instance, the KD calculator KCalc, you will need most of the KD frameworks. You will need Qt, you will need uh, compression libraries such as Zlib, you will need um, um, image codec uh, libraries such as libpng, you will need uh, at least 200 development packages from your distribution. Okay, so you need packages from your distribution. In my case, I'm on Kubuntu 22.10, so packages which end in minus dev.deb. Then I'm going to need Qt, from Qt at least 100 Debian packages, all of the dev uh, Qt packages and uh, other Qt uh, dep packages for various uh, Qt modules. Then using KDSRC minus build, I'm going to build the needed KD frameworks version 5, and then the applications themselves, such as KCalc, the KD calculator. Okay, so that's why we use uh, KDSRC minus build. In order to build, in this example, KCalc from the master branch, of the canonical git repository for um, kcalc, which is in vendotkid.org slash utilities slash kcalc. Okay, so let's see how I have uh, kdsrc minus build set up. For that, I'm going to go to the official kd community's website, which is kd.org. There's a page called Get Involved. In there, we go to Development. Development again. So this is the start page if you want to configure KDSRC minus build for the first time on your machine. I have configured KDSRC minus build on my machine, which means I have installed 1000 Debian packages, which are required by various KD Git repositories. But I didn't use KDSRC minus build for a week. What to do now? KDSRC minus build, if you're going to build KCalc with it, it's going to get the latest and greatest from the Git repository of KCalc and its master branch. And we're going to build that. The same, it's going to do the same for all of the other dependencies of kcalc, which are KDE git repositories hosted on uh, invent.kd.org, such as most of the KDE frameworks version 5. But then it's not going to update KDE SRC minus build. Which is this thing. So KDE SRC minus build, when run, does not build, it, does not git patch itself, so it doesn't update itself from um, Git. So the first thing that I want to do is to make sure that my local KDSRC minus build is up to date. But first let's look at the way I have KDSRC minus build configured. So I have configured it uh, following this page. I'm on um, Kubuntu, so I need to go sudo apt install git cmake uh, dialog. I configured git Okay, and then from time to time, like uh, once per month, I uh, actually um, make a backup of my um, KDSRC minus building installation, which is the tilde slash KD directory plus the tilde slash dot config KDSRC minus build file using this command line. And this moves all of the KDSRC installation out of the way such that I can install from scratch KDSRC minus build. All of the 
Debian uh, packages are already reinstalled, so this time is going to be way faster to reinstall from scratch KDSRC minus build. So I run uh, these lines. I run initial setup because I don't have um, the KDSRC minus build file anymore. Because in this step, I'm moving the KDSRC minus buildrc file to KDSRC minus buildrc tilde BAK from backup. Okay. Then I source bashrc to have uh, the correct path, which I check using the echo environment variable path command line. Then um, there's uh, additional information about uh, how to use KDSRC in uh, these four links. So the manual, the readme from the KDSRC minus build git repository, the doc readme, and uh, the source reference. Okay. I don't need to set up Qt in any special ways because I did not download Qt from the Qt website, from the Qt framework website, which is Qt.io, and I did not build Qt using KDSRC. I'm just using Qt from my Linux distribution, which again is Kubuntu 22.10. So nothing interesting I need to do in here. I just kept the defaults. Yes, I disabled uh, indexing. And then it says download non-KD dependencies, which is most of the pain that you encounter when you set up KDSRC minus build for the first time on you know, a fresh installation of Linux. Okay, for my case, I'm on Ubuntu. I know that I, if I uh, cannot build Dolphin using KDSRC minus build, then I need to go up to build the Dolphin such that we install all of the um, minus dev pack, dev packages that are required in order to build successfully the Dolphin, uh, um, what's called Debian source package. Okay. How does a uh, Debian uh, source package look like? So in uh, Debian and Ubuntu, we have two types of uh, packages. We have what's called packages and we have source packages. Packages will be, in the case of Debian, the Debian executable. So the binary, the, this thing. Okay. Uh, might be other dev packages related to Dolphin. I don't know what, I don't have any example. And then there's the source uh, package from which the Dolphin packages, the packages have been built. Okay, so Dolphin dev, there's such a thing, file manager development files. Okay, we're not talking about Dolphin MU, which is an emulator, we're talking about the Dolphin file manager from the KD Plasma desktop. Okay. So I go to one of the packages which uh, result from building the source package, such as Dolphin in this case. So I'm on Kinetic 22.10. And it says that the source package is Delphin. Is Dolphin. Uh, there's a link here above the name of the package. So in the top of the page or the source package that corresponds to the uh, Dolphin dev package. And there's also a, uh, in the right hand side, there's download source package Dolphin. And we can see that the source package Dolphin consists out of three files. There's the original um, source code release tarball from the KDE community which has been renamed to .org from original .tar and .xz, so it was compressed using .xz.
Okay, so the once the KDE community does um, releases, um, source code release tarballs are created, which are available from here in this case. So we're searching for Dolphin. What's the name of the package? So this is the stable release service 22.12. Yes, I, I don't know exactly where the KD community puts the source code release tarball of uh, Dolphin, but it's going to be on um, a URL such as this, and the file is going to be named like this. So it's compressed as .tar.xz. But then Ubuntu and Debian rename that thing to .org.tar.xz. Okay. So let's actually look at um, the three files that make up the source package for Dolphin. So there's a theorictar.xz. Then there's a DSC file and a Debian tar.xz file. Okay, did the files finish downloading? No because there are uh, potential security risk. Okay. So now that we have the complete um, source code, the complete downloads, let's extract each, each of these files and see. So DSC is a plain text file that says that um, some metadata. Okay. DSC. What does it say? PGP signature. PGP signed message. Okay, it says build depends that uh, Dolphin depends on Baloo, on get text, on the crash, kcrash, KD frameworks version 5, kfile metadata, kcm utils, k notifications, etc. k new stuff. Okay, and from the source package, the following dev packages will be created Dolphin, Dolphin dev, Dolphin VCS minus dev lib dolphin vcs5 so four debian dot deb packages are created from a from the source package named dolphin okay it says the following binary debs and this source package okay and uh, the code is maintained in here. There's a KD Git repo uh, there's a Git repository from the Ubuntu team named Kubuntu Packagers, Kubuntu Packaging, that contains all of the additional data that's not inside the inside here. So there's some files that are available inside of the KDE source tarball, and there are extra files that are needed in order to generate the Debian packages correctly. And so those extra files are maintained in this Git repository. And those extra files are in fact this file, Dolphin Ubuntu 1, dot debian dot tar dot xz let's extract the files and see so it's xz that's tar minus 
xjvf and to minus. Okay, so there's a Debian directory. And then there's another tar.xz file, the original KDE source code release tarboard. Okay, so we have two directories. This one comes from the KDE community. This one comes from the Kubuntu packagers, Ubuntu team. And from Debian. Okay. So uh, the um, Dolphin KDE source tarball is a uh, standard KDE CMake uh, project. So it has a top level CMake lists file. It's uh, just a subset of the source code that's in the KDE Git repository for Dolphin. And the addition, these are the additional files that are needed in order to, uh, for the Debian build system to know that it should convert this directory into four um, Debian.deb packages. The most important entry point file is this uh, control file. It says that there's a .deb package which is called Dolphin a dot dev package which is called dolphin dev, a dot dev package which is called lib dolphin vcs dev, and another one lib dolphin vcs file. Okay. Let's get back to where we were. So this is uh, when we say that we want to build the KD Git repository for Dolphin. In fact, we are going to install all of the Debian packages that are needed in order to, as the build dependencies, in order to build the um, Ubuntu source package. We're not building the Ubuntu source package for Dolphin. We're in fact using KDSRC minus build to build Dolphin from KD invent Git master. But still, there's many dependencies which are common between the us building Dolphin using KDSRC minus build and uh, Ubuntu building uh, the Dolphin Ubuntu source package using the Debian build machinery. Okay. So I'm going to run this if I want to build uh, Dolphin, where are you? Opt build depth, this thing. Opt build depth, Dolphin. Okay. Then I want to build all. Of, do I want to build all of the KD frameworks version five? The answer is always yes. Using KDSRC minus build, I always build K, all of the KD frameworks version five um, Git repositories. In fact, this that's the first thing that I do once I set up KDSRC minus build. The very first thing that I build there is I go KDSRC minus build space frameworks in order to build all of the KD frameworks version 5. Okay, so I'm on Kubuntu, so I'm going to run this list up to build the poll kit Q1, K window system, K wallet, K5, Kirigami 2, KJS, K file metadata, K5, K calcore, KD web kit, K HTML, modem manager, Q dolphin, plasma desktop, plasma workspace, Kwin. With these, uh, Deb package is installed. I can build all of the KD frameworks version five using KDSRC minus build, no problem. If I win, if I want to build more, such as if I want to build the entire Plasma, I'm going to also run this command line. So build the Plasma desktop, Plasma workspace, and Kwin. Okay, but again, I have run already KDSRC minus build on this machine. I have built 400 Git repositories from the KD community already. So I have most of the minus dev dot dev packages installed already. Okay. 
let's see how my um, configuration file looks like. So I kept the defaults. In here I replaced uh, really with debug for with debug and the correct number of cores. Everything else is uh, default. Okay. Now, because I did not use KDSRC minus build for a week, I am going to be behind. So my local KDE Git repository for KDSRC minus build is not going to be as up to date as the official KDE Git repository, which lives in KDE in invent.kd.org. So let's uh, make sure KDSRC minus build is up to date. So I'm going to go git fetch in the directory where I git clone KDSRC minus build using the official instructions. Where are you? So on uh, this line, we go git clone KDSRC minus build RC, uh, KDSRC minus build in this directory, tilde slash kd slash src. I cannot clone it again. I cloned it once. So now I need to make sure of all of the git commits that exist on the official kd git repository are have been downloaded locally, which they have. And now I'm going to make sure I use the git master branch. Okay, I'm on the on another um, KD Git repository. Let's uh, so this is because I'm uh, developing for KDSRC minus build. I don't need these changes, so I go commit revert changes. Visualize all branch history. I do not want to be on my branches. I want to be on uh, the remote origin master Git repository. So for that I go right click check out this branch on the this master local branch right click check out this branch and i need to make sure that the local branch is on the same git commit as the remote origin master which i am so that means that the last uh, git commit on the master branch for git for kdsrc minus build was in the 7th of december so let's check it out if that's the case. Five days ago. What's that? Uh, history commits remove from 13 December. Remove suggestion to check buildkd.org status. So something is not okay. Fetch from origin. Okay, so now I have the actual commits from the remote named origin. So when I went git fetch, it actually fetched from my from the remote named fork from my own fork of the KD git repository. So that was wrong. So I needed to go git fetch uh, probably origin. But I can do it using git GUI, using the main menu in git GUI, remote, fetch from, and then I, I select origin. Okay, success. Now I'm going to look at the history and make the local master branch, which has the name just master, point at the same git commit this remove suggestion to check uh, build kd.org status as the remote origin master so for that i go right click on the commit and uh, reset master branch to here hard okay and now both the local git master branch and the remote origin master branch point to the same git commit which is what i want 
Okay, now my key is SRC minus build installation is up to date. So I can start building. I open a console, which is a terminal. The very first thing that I do is I build KD frameworks. So first of all, it um, Make sure the KD Git repository is admin repo metadata is up to date because this contains the dependencies between the KD Git repositories. Otherwise, it would not know in which order to build KD Git repositories and would not know what frameworks means. This frameworks word. Okay, so there's 88 Git repositories to git clone if they don't, do not exist locally or to make sure they're up to date and then to build and install. Not all of these 88 are um, from uh, KD frameworks. Some are libraries which are needed by KD frameworks. Okay, so it's going to take a while because uh, Again, I did not build in seven days. Uh, this does not do rebuild, it does build. So if the source code of Kcore add-ons did not change in two days and you have built it, if you have built Kcore add-ons yesterday and uh, you're building it again to, today, then uh, almost nothing will be done. KDSRC will just see that uh, the source code did not change, nothing to compile, so nothing to install. So it will go really fast over the KD Git repositories, over the KDSRC minus build modules that have already built and installed correctly. Okay, so poll kit Q21. is not a KD framework, but is needed by uh, KD frameworks. It's a third party library. And then the KD Git repository plasma Wayland protocols is from KD support, but it's needed by KD frameworks, which is strange. Okay, crash. I'll be back once it finishes. While um, KDSRC minus build continues building frameworks, let's look at the command line for um, um, KDSRC minus build. So we have KDSRC minus build in the path. So we can run kdsrc minus build and if we run it with zero parameters it does not uh, display the usage as some of the command line uh, executables do in fact it's going to be it's going to build all of the modules that it knows about so in my case it's going to build 400 and something kd git repositories which we do not want. In order to get at the help, there's the minus minus help command line argument or parameter. So Michael Pine, um, the configuration file could be the default one, which is in uh, tilde slash conf dot config slash kdsrc minus build, or there could be a uh, kdsrc minus buildrc file in the directory where we have run kdsrc minus build. So we can have a special directory. I know. SRC run dir shoot six. 
like this. Let's change that. We'll copy the existing file, configuration file. In here, not copy, but CP. Okay. And then we can make it diverge from tilde slash dot config dot slash kdsrc minus buildrc such that I don't know we use kd kf6 qt6 instead of k5 um, qt5 any other change we could uh, start uh, defining modules and module sets in here if you want or we could for instance exclude the only modules it knows about so all sorts of changes we could do locally in here and then when we start in this special directory kdsrc minus build it will pick up the changes from the current directory, so from tilde slash kdsrc minus run dir qt6 thing. Okay, so instead of building 400 git repositories, it built zero build repositories because it doesn't know what build repositories to build because there's no kdsrc minus build modules or module sets defined in the um, kdsrc minus buildrc file that's in this directory. Okay. There do not seem to be any modules to build in your configuration. That's the message. Because there's no module keyword here, no module set keyword here, and I have I have commented out the files where such modules are uh, defined. Let's find such a module in, um, where is it? In here, kdsrc minus builders uh, in the source, in the directory where we git clone kdsrc minus build. So there's a file named kf5qt5 build include, kf5qt5 build include, f4 this thing. This does not do anything, it just includes K5, K5 frameworks build include. Frameworks listing. Okay, which actually has taglib. Let's take this. Control V. Okay. So our configuration kdsrc minus buildrc file from this special directory has just one module defined, no module says defined, just the module taglib. If we try to build all of the modules, just this will be built. Okay, let's see that. We go kdsrc minus build with no parameters, it will try to build all of the modules and module sets it knows about. And it knows about just one taglib. So it goes uh, fetch in the sense that it um, try to see if the KD, if the git repository has been cloned and it has. Then merging toggle changes from master branch, which means probably git fetch master, git fetch origin, uh, git rebase origin master. Okay. And then uh, the source code did not change. No need to run CMake, no need to compile, no need to install. Okay, so that's a way to have many different configurations for KDSRC minus build by having special directories where you have uh, spe um, different KDSRC minus build configuration files. And when you're in a 
the, that directory and you run kdsrc-build, it's going to prefer to use the configuration file that's in the same directory where you ran kdsrc-build, so the current directory of the executable of the process. Or you could um, give, provide the kdsrc-buildrc file that you prefer using the command line. So there's a possibility, the command line option called minus minus rc minus file equals. Okay, so it prefers another configuration file instead of the default. So let's um, change directory to another directory. And now if I go kdsrc-build, with no parameters, it will try to build 400 git repositories. Just a second. Okay, so the parameter is called rc file equals. And then the directory is tilde slash What was the name? Middle click paste and like this. Unable to open config file. Not to complete for me. Maybe it doesn't like tilde and wants full paths. So this is a relative path and this is a full path. Or an absolute path, yes. Okay. So that's about configuration files. If you don't specify any, it will use the default one. It will prefer to use the one in the local directory if you don't specify one. That's the way it is. Okay. No SRC, you would use no SRC if you edit locally a Git repository or many. For instance, you are going to edit one of the KD frameworks and then you're going to build an application such as KCalc because that KCalc depends on the KD framework and you want to have your fix on the KD frameworks. So then wherever you build KCalc in order to make sure that your changes in the that uh, KD framework are correct. You need to make sure that you pass to KDSRC minus build the parameter minus minus no SRC because otherwise it will git fetch the source code, the changes, git changes from for that uh, KD framework and overwrite your local changes. So KDSRC minus build tries really hard to build the, the remote origin master branch and ignore whatever changes you did locally. The only way to stop it is to say, I know what the source code looks like locally. Please don't do any git things. That's the parameter minus minus no SRC. Okay. Uh, refresh build, it's very time consuming because it will um, um, if you go kdsrc minus build and then uh, minus minus, uh, let's do an example. kdsrc, let's see if the build has finished. So yes, we finished um, git cloning, git fetching, so making sure the git uh, remote origin master branch is exists locally and uh, doing semi configure 
building and installing that thing. Okay, so let's see how we can uh, use refresh build. So this thing. So if you go KDSRC build and then we want to give it a um, KDGit repository that has a dependency. So let's say key internationalization. Okay, so key internationalization depends on ECM extra CMake modules. If I'm going to go minus minus refresh build. It's going to see that uh, these three Git repositories are correct, one, two, and three. But then it's going to run um, fresh. So it's going to run rebuilds, not builds. It's going to run a fresh CMake configure, a fresh make compile, and a fresh make install for uh, these three modules because this module just contains data and does not need to be does not need to be built refresh build is sometimes necessary because um, the installing step might not be run in order to see what's running and what not, we have the command line parameter, which is called debug. So this is uh, make, so building. And then sometimes when you run the minus minus debug, you add the minus minus debug command line parameter to your command, you're going to say, see that it skips the part installing. Let's try that. So again, it builds, but then it skips installing. It doesn't install anything. After make build, it doesn't run make install. It says skipping install. If you really want to mm, uh, run forcefully make install, then you would need to use the parameter minus minus refresh minus build. But only if you run it with a, you need to know to run it with a command line parameter minus minus debug because otherwise it will not say anything. So you saw some compiling. You thought yes, it compiles and then it installs things, but no, it doesn't install anything. So nothing, nothing at all, not even a file. The whole uh, make install phase was skipped. And you need to go minus minus refresh build in order to uh, actually install. Okay, now, now what if uh, this module that we're uh, building using KDSRC minus build does not depend on one Git repository, but it, it depends on 100 Git repositories. And we still want to force the make install step. So for that, we would go refresh build and debug give it just one module name as parameter, but then we go no include dependencies. Okay. So it skips directly to K internationalization. It runs configure uh, CMake configure again, runs make uh, compile again, runs make install again, but did not do anything for uh, the previous module, which is uh, ECM extra CMake modules. How we can see that? Because we have a wall of text and didn't see anything. And even if we scroll, we can't see the, uh, if we scroll in console, we can't see the start of the command line because this is called the terminal buffer and the terminal buffer one is get it gets full uh, you will not be able to see what was before this uh, line this cd line 
Okay. So a way to do it is to use T. So we're using the um, pipe to redirect standard output and standard error from this command line into T such that we can continue seeing. Um, so T also puts what it receives via standard input, so the standard output and standard error of this command line arrives in the standard input of uh, T. T then immediately displays it on the terminal, so on its standard output, but it also writes it to a file. So in our case, let's go with the evergreen a.txt. Okay, so now we can both see the output and Later, we will be able to inspect the output using uh, a text editor. Okay, relocate ela slash a dot txt. Let's put an ampersand at the end. So let's see how far the scroll uh, buffer goes. So it's installing. Um, she make install fast. This is the make step, so compiling. And uh, this is the where are you? This is the configure step, so CMake. This is the compiling, so make. This is where it starts working on the KD Git repository key internationalization. In here. Okay. It updates sysadmin repo metadata. It uh, sees that key internationalization depends on ECM. But it says uh, extra ECM, extra CMake modules skipping. So it doesn't do anything for any of the KDSRC minus build modules and module sets on which K internationalization depends because that's what we said. We said no include dependencies. Okay. In here, no include dependencies. We said debug because we want full output. And we said the refresh build because we want make install to be run. Okay, so T writes whatever this command line outputs to the same place, so to the terminal, but also writes it to the given text file, so tilde slash a.txt, which is this file. So whatever is in here, the standard output of T is also in the text file. So cd slash home, slurping, slurping, updating, run logged, log command, everything is in here, hopefully. Okay, so that's the way to both see full output from KDSRC minus build using minus minus debug and to redirect the many lines of text that are written to the terminal to a text file. So this redirects just standard output of the pipe, and we want to redirect both standard output and standard error. So because we're in bash shell, born again shell, we can use pipe and ampersand in order to redirect towards an executable both output standard streams or standard output and standard error from the previous command. Okay, no include dependencies in order to not build any other git mod, uh, KD SRC minus build module, except the one that we give it at the command line, which is key internationalization. Okay. Let's see if we can uh, 
run the same command line but actually build two modules so what was the name of the dependency of key internationalization extra sync modules okay so it uh, rebuilt so built fully the two kdgit repositories that are given as command line parameters to kdsrc minus build so extra sync modules and key internationalization okay what else So pretend is like uh, minus s in opt or dry run or simulate. No SRC does not do git operations. So these are for checking and not doing anything. SRC only if we don't want to build today. Let's, for instance, now we have a good internet connection. We're at university. We can uh, download all of the kdgit repositories, so that would be kdsrc minus build no parameters and then src only. This should download all of the kdgit repositories in tilde slash kd slash src. And then when you're at home and you have maybe zero git internet connectivity, you can uh, build all of the modules if needed with minus minus no src. We went over RC file, we went over refresh build. Initial setup is what we have run. Where are you? In here. So it creates the tilde slash dot config slash kdsrc minus build rc default configuration file. Resume from, uh, we can use resume from similar to uh, no include dependencies. For instance, we can tell it to build only K internationalization, not extra simic modules. And instead of no include dependencies, we can say resume from and itself. If we say resume from the same module that we're trying to build, then it's, it does the same thing as uh, minus minus no minus include minus dependencies so in here it's defined no uh, include dependencies and the opposite of no include dependencies is include dependencies but include dependencies is um, a default option if you run uh, kdsrc minus build initial setup okay. So it's the same thing, it just builds key internationalization, it doesn't build uh, accessing modules because we told it to start. In... So KDSSC minus build computes a tree of dependencies between modules. And when we say it should build key internationalization, then it uh, takes a subtree of that tree. So the tree that ends with uh, key internationalization, and then it uh, transforms that uh, tree into a list. So it uh, makes the trees two dimensional and the list is one dimensional. So it uh, converts that to a list and it builds the module in modules in the correct uh, order. And uh, when we say resume from a certain module in that list, then it uh, builds that module first and then the next one second, etc. Okay. Stop before, stop after, I did not use yet. Resume from, I did use yet, I did use. Uh, it's Resume from is useful for me when I um, tell it to ignore failures. So if I give it to build uh, all of the KD games, for instance, it will try to build all, all of the KD frameworks, then all of the KD games and maybe some of the KD games repositories fails to build and I have no problem with that. So then I tell it to ignore failures 
and after I fix the why a certain module does not build, usually the problem is a CMake problem, a missing dependency, so I uh, wait for uh, the entire KDSRC minus build KD games to finish command line. At the end, it tells me that two modules did not build. I'm uh, fixing dependencies for both, and then I say resume from the first module that failed. So again, the first module that failed, I tell it to resume from there. Okay. What else? So the option is stop on failure, which is a default option. If you use um, KDSRC minus build initial setup and you use that configuration file created by this step. Okay, let's look at uh, other web pages. So this is the um, latest version of the manual. Most KD applications have a main manual which is stored in here, doc slash KD slash work trunk 5 EN, and then the name of the KD Git repository was written over a long number of time of years. It's not that up to date, so you need to take whatever the manual says with a grain of salt. Because in this case, it says it wasn't um, updated from 2019. So it might not be up to date, might not know about Git, just about SVN, or it might promote SVN subversion too, too much, or Maybe some of the defaults have changed, some of the command line options for KDSRC minus build have changed, but then there's a ton of nuggets that uh, existed five years ago, are documented in the, in the manual, and still work today. Okay. What else? The entry point of the KDGit repository for KDSRC minus build, which is readme.md. Again, the entry point and the official documentation for KDSRC minus build is not in the manual, is not in readme.md. The official one is always this in the KD community wiki, community.kd.org slash get involved slash development. Okay, so there's a guided um, initial setup, so text user interface, TUI, which is this thing, KDSRC minus build setup. We don't use that, we recommend to use the, the one which just prompts things at the um, standard output, which is KDSRC minus build initial setup. Okay. So if you're looking for ways to improve your knowledge of KDSRC minus build, do know that this is the canonical official page, and then whatever is in these three U uh, URLs might be relevant or not, might be old and deprecated. So maximum attention with what you do with this information. Print modules, pretend, rebuild failures. I didn't know of rebuild failures. It's not documented here. I'm not sure if it still exists. So if you run um, without stop on failures or non-stop on failure, you build all of the KDE games. To fail, you then fix one by one the CMake uh, build uh, errors. So you install minus dev dot dev uh, Ubuntu packages. Then you can go KDSRC minus build, KD games, and minus minus rebuild failures. Maybe. 
I did not test. Remove after install if you're low on disk space. So make sure you're not low on disk space. Make sure when you're programming for KD that you have enough hardware. If you're programming in a virtual machine, make that virtual machine 250 gigabytes in size. Make sure that the virtual machine is on NVMe if possible. If not, at least on an SSD, don't put it on a hard disk while on a spinning disk. Why would you do that? Do you want to wait for hours for simple modules to build? So do, if possible, go ahead and build on, and buy yourself uh, better, moderner hardware because it will make your, it will um, save hours and hours of your life. You will not have to wait for slow hard disks to spin. So modern NVMe PCI 3 plus modern 7 nanometer CPUs with many cores are extremely energy efficient, are very cheap, you can buy them second hand. So do make an effort and get good hardware if you're trying to program for the KD community. Okay, and the last one is this. which is what index.adoc. So there's a git phase, a build phase, test suit. I did not run test suits. I don't know how to enable those. There's module sets and modules. Retend logs, minus minus debug. It uh, tells us how the source code works like. Okay, so that was um, it. That was me telling you how to learn more advanced things about KDSRC minus build. How you can help yourself improve your knowledge that you have about KDSRC minus build by using the canonical documentation of KDSRC minus build, which is this page and then augmenting that with whatever still works today from these four uh, web pages. Thank you.